New York, how's everyone doing today? You know, Champlain has been very, very kind to me over the years. Yes. All right, we're about to start the final tournament of the Bassmaster Elite Series season number nine. Welcome and here we go again, the Bassmaster Elite Season for 2023 in review. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore. And Ronnie, there's something about this northern swing that we're right in the middle of here. Last time it was St. Clair, big smallmouth action as always. But I think the anglers get energized at the end of the season because they know they can come up to the north and have a reasonable expectation of a possibility of catching four days, magnificent stringers of fish and really making a splash. Now, I love that. Yeah, the first big thing that these anglers love is that it's not hundreds of degrees like it is in the yeah. south in the summer. And when you come up north, the, the possibilities are endless. Like you said, the weights are getting higher every time we come here. Technology in the sport of fishing is getting better. These anglers who were from the south, maybe never fished for smallmouth early in their career, are learning smallmouth more and more. And now the best anglers in the world are on some of the best bodies of water in the world at a great time. And obviously magic's going to happen. So when we go to Lake Champlain and the St. Lawrence River, we can kind of sum it all up with I love New York because we're going to see some of the biggest weights of the season. We're going to see the cut weight, that top 50. If you want to get paid and make it to fish on the weekend, you're going to have to have higher and higher weight every single time we come here. And Champlain was no different. The one big deal at Champlain, though, when the water is high, you expect maybe largemouth to factor. In the past, we've seen smallmouth winners, we've seen largemouth winners, and we've seen a mixture of both be in the winning stringer. But there's kind of a tide has been turned. The smallmouth are getting bigger. We're learning more about them. And now a lot of anglers are putting all their eggs in the smallmouth basket, rightfully so. So let's see exactly how it played out. We take you to this beautiful place between the Green Mountains and the Adirondacks Lake Champlain for the Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Elite. Beautiful is an understatement, Tommy, and it's also one of the best bodies of water in the nation. Look at those day one weights for our top 10. Yeah, very much a tightly grouped there in that top 10. Cody Huff on top. We're going to start our second day of four days of fishing. Get out on the water with fourth place, Justin Atkins. I had a good practice every day. I, I got on a couple different little deals. <clears throat> one that I liked the best was uh, this little grass fishing deal. Um, fish are running these hard walls that are in certain depths, um, need a little bait, but when you got all the ingredients, seem to be a lot of big smallmouth there. Um, so that was, the, that was the deal I chose to run the first day of the tournament. Started off pretty hot and uh, was able to keep it going all day, and, you know, cull throughout the day and sample a little bit of everything I kind of wanted to look at. I all had fish on it, so I don't know what a day off will do. Shouldn't do anything, they were, you know, that pattern seemed to be good all the way through practice. There you go. That's more like it. Keeper there for Justin Atkins, the man from Alabama who has an affinity for the Empire State here. He has done well in New York, Ronnie. Yeah, almost winning at the St. Lawrence River, which is our next stop, and he would love to take home a Champlain victory before we get there. It's day two here at Champlain. We're going out in the lead. Uh, you know, day one, we had an awesome day. We went out and, you know, everything went just as planned. That doesn't ever happen in this game, but day one, it went just like it was supposed to. We went out and, you know, by 10 o'clock, we probably had all of our weight. And we're just, we're around a lot of fish. They're just moving a lot. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun today. I'm hoping to go out there and, and have a really good day. Uh, 
Yesterday we had a rain delay, had some really really bad wind, and uh, so we set the set the day out yesterday. But my wife and little one are here with me, so we just relaxed and had a good time. Uh, but now it's game time. We're ready to get back after it. We'll see what day two holds. Oof. That's a big one. Come on, darling. Come up in here with us. Come on. Come on. Look at that hook just fell out. Whew. One of these days I'm gonna learn how to land one. Oh, things are happening in the Inland Sea. Always so much to take in. Every time we go to the special place Lake Champlain, day two is completed. When we come back, we'll launch into day number three with a special emphasis on a very special Rookie of the Year race. The Bassmaster Elite Series is sponsored by Yamaha, Rapala, Progressive Insurance, Nitro Boats, and by Power Pole. dead center of what we call the Northern Swing for the Bassmaster Elite Series 2023. We are on legendary Lake Champlain here. Incredible fishing for the first two days of competition. We're ready to go with day number three with a special race in mind, but let's take a quick look at the top of that leaderboard. That uh, refers to the race we're talking about. Rookie of the year and the rookie Kyoya Fujita on top, Ronnie Moore. Dominating performance so far. He is one to watch. Anytime we come to smallmouth events, finesse presentations, Kyoya Fujita has shown in his rookie season, he is one to contend with. Tommy, he's already had two finishes in the top three, multiple other top tens, and still at this point in the season, he still is not in charge of the rookie of the year race. Yes, incredibly, we have a rookie who has already notched two victories this season. Joey Cifuentes with victories down in Florida at Seminole and also at St. Clair in this northern swing here. So with uh, Cifuentes out of the top 10, but just a few positions out, this is an opportunity for Fujita. The door is certainly open and Kyoya is showing his expertise. He is fishing around a lot of other anglers and is still showing his dominance in that Butler Island region of the Inland Sea. Yes, big fish, beautiful boat. Tommy, it seems like when Kiyoyo Fujita is in the mix in the top five, Joey Safuentes has came through to win those events. But this week, Fujita has the edge and has the opportunity to make up points. Let's take a look back at their awesome season so far, starting at Lake Seminole. Yes! Ah, bam! Man! Yes! Oh yes! Yeah! Yeah! 18 pounds, 7 ounces! The Cowboy Conquer Seminole! Yes! Yeah. Six pounds! Yes! Come here, girl. No! Oh! Ah! Yes. The cowboy, Joey C. Fuentes! The cowboy conquers Lake St. Clair and doubles down in 2023! 
But what an incredible battle for Rookie of the Year. This is this is not like two rookies trying to find their way on the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is a heavyweight slugfest. Two victories for Cifuentes. And look at Fujita on his way to five top tens during the course of the season. Incredible. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Big. Yes. Yes. You got to be feeling pretty good now, okay? Huh? Yeah, good. Full ten. Yes. Nick Sangler is in second place in our Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year race all the way from Japan. Kyoya Fujita at 45 pounds and three ounces needs 1913 to take his day two lead back into our final day championship Monday looking for 19 pounds 13 ounces. 22 pounds, nine ounces, 22 pounds, nine ounces, with 67 pounds, 12 ounces. The question is, can anybody topple Mount Fujita? Good stuff from the 28-year-old rookie from Japan. The real question is, is there any place that is not in his wheelhouse? Very, very few, apparently. We're getting ready to come back and show you the final day's action from Lake Champlain with Fujita on top. Come here, girl. No! Oh! Oh! Did you see that? Oh my goodness! That fish jumped in the boat! The Avco Bassmaster Elite at Lake St. Clair belongs to the cowboy, Joey Cifuentes! Our next Sangler is in second place in our Dakota Lithium Rookie of the Year race all the way from Japan. Kyoya Fujita had 45 pounds and three ounces. Needs 1913 to take his day two lead back into our final day, Championship Monday. Looking for 19 pounds, 13 ounces. 22 pounds, nine ounces. 22 pounds, nine ounces, with 67 pounds, 12 ounces. The question is, can anybody topple Mount Fujita? Very, very effective. The rookie from Japan, the amazing Kyoya Fujita. But before he took that lead, another battle in this tournament set up for second and third. Tie, actually, for second place, Justin Atkins and Cody Huff. He's a former Bassmaster Open winner, a former Forest Wood Cup champion from Alabama, Justin Atkins. He's 21-4. 21 pounds, three ounces. He needed 21-4 to take the lead. 21-3 puts him in a two-way tie for the lead, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for your co-leader, Justin Atkins. Atkins and Huff tied for second place behind Kyoyo Fujita and not a huge mountain to climb, but at Lake Champlain, with how close the weights are, almost a three-pound deficit means they have work to do going into this final day of competition, and Cody Huff sets up his day. Good morning, everybody. We're rolling out. Spot number two, day four here. Anytime you get that opportunity, you need to take advantage of it because it's a very special one. This is a hard position to get in. We're going after him today. We've got one goal in mind. We're looking for big ones, five of them. We're just gonna swing for the fences. That's, a, that's what you gotta do in this position. Worst case scenario, you end up in 10th place. Best case scenario, you're bringing home a trophy. Come here, big girl. Come here. Ooh, baby. That's what I'm talking about. We'll have some of that. We 
Cody Huff, who came out on the Bassmaster Elite Series with a lot of fanfare truly coming into his own this special week in the Empire State of New York. Locked in a battle, though, with Justin Atkins. These two trading blows all the way through this tournament so far. First day of this tournament, a good friend of mine, a guy I've looked up to in the fishing world for a long time, passed away from cancer. And today they're going to lay him to rest. That one's for you, Jay Bird. I miss you, buddy. Tommy, one thing I love when you get 100 Elite Series pros together on one playing field, they will figure out something a little bit different. Justin Atkins employing an underspin, a jig head with a blade on the bottom to stay in contention this week, right behind Kyoya Fujita. Oh, big, big, big. Big. Beautiful fish. Yes. Four, four, three. Four, three. Our next angler, a former Bassmaster Open winner. He's a former Forest Wood Cup champion from Alabama, Justin Atkins. 64 pounds and 15 ounces at the start of the day today. He is looking for 18 pounds, three ounces to take over the lead. 20 pounds, seven ounces. With 85 pounds, six ounces, we say goodbye to Bryant Schmidt and we say hello to Justin Atkins, your brand new leader. His second season on the Bassmaster Elite Series, he's a two-time classic qualifier, a former Strike King college bass champion from Ava, Missouri, Cody Huff. 64 pounds and 15 ounces. To take the lead, he needs 20 pounds and eight ounces. 20 pounds, six ounces. Two ounces short of the lead with 85 pounds and five ounces. Another great finish here on the Elite Series for Cody Huff. Dig it deep in that VMC way and back. Get loud for Cody Huff. He was your day three leader, making his fourth cut in only eight Elite Series events from Japan, the prince of Japanese angling, Koya Fujita. Going to have to get Justin side by side. An incredible first time Elite Series champion, no matter which one of these guys wins. Koya had 67 pounds, 12 ounces at the start of the day today. He's looking for 17 11 to become an Elite Series champion in his rookie season. Needs 17 pounds, 11 ounces. Nineteen pounds even with eighty six pounds, twelve ounces. We have our fourth victory from a rookie this year on the Bassmaster Elite Series. The Prince of Japanese Angling, Koya Fujita, is a Bassmaster Elite Series champion. 
And Mount Fujita cannot be conquered on Championship Monday. 86 pounds, 12 ounces, and you are a Bassmaster Elite Series champion. Well, we are in the age of the impressive rookie, but even with all of that, Kyoya Fujita seems to be something extra, extra special. His fifth top 10 of his rookie season here and his first win. This young kid, I would say, is going places, Ronnie Moore. Yeah, I think it's kind of weird for me to say, but eight events into his Elite Series career, and it's long overdue for this victory. What an impressive rookie. And if you look at that leaderboard, every angler in the top 10 eclipsing 20 pounds per day on average. Lake Champlain is the place to be. The Bassmaster Elite Series is sponsored by Humminbird, Mercury, Toyota, and by Ranger Boats. Welcome back. We are right in the middle of the Northern Swing 2023 Bassmaster Elite Series. In review, we have had the Lake Champlain Tournament for you, and right now we're getting started on the St. Lawrence River. And these days, it's, it's been more than a year since we lost the original leader of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society, Ray Scott. But what a magnificent leader he was, a vision for everything, making bass the ultimate destination for tournament circuits, for TV and media, and for conservation. One of the main pillars of BASS is our buddy, Mark Zona says, Ronnie, uh, he protected the star of the show. That was the bass. Yeah, and we've seen that progress throughout the years from the don't kill your catch initiative long ago because in the sport of fishing and its infant stages, that was the focus, taking the fish out of the water and you would never return them there. He has progressed it each step of the way with the fish in mind. Now we're at the five fish limit and 99% live release rates. Bass is trying to continue those efforts. Anglers are very keen on keeping this resource well because when we look at the weights that Lake Champlain puts out and we look at the weights and the records that are broken at the St. Lawrence River. It's now on us and our responsibility to keep these resources flowing well because this is this is the star. It's the playing field. It's the star of the show. Right. And where we're going right now, the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario. 30 years ago, it was a very different fishery. Now it is so much better in terms of population and size. Can't wait to get back there. You know, tournament fishing is actually the reason we have a lot of the good conservation habits that we have. When I meet someone that isn't familiar with tournament fishing and they think, ah, oh, do you guys, what happens to those fish? What do you do with them? If I get a chance to talk to them, it, it changes their perspective about tournament fishing. So what we have to do is provide a way to release that gas and fizzing the fish with a needle is one way of managing it. We have the biologists down here fizzing them. If they look like they need to let the air out of them, they will. So. I actually have a fizz needle too, so when you, if you were a bass in the Elite Series and you get captured and put in my boat, you're going to have a pretty good day from then on out because it's our goal to make sure we keep as many of them alive as we can, and I'm really proud of these guys for doing that. Fish care is such a pivotal thing in bass fishing tournaments. We are stewards of the resource. It is of the utmost concern that we take care of our fish. Conservation, always one of the main platforms of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. So many bodies of water improved through the years through Bassmaster driven efforts. And here's some more evidence of that right now. What happened on day number one at the St. Lawrence River. 29 pounds and five ounces. And say hello to your brand new leader. Uh, it's insane. Yeah, 29.5. Uh, it's absolutely ridiculous like it's, it's not even real it doesn't even seem real uh, setting the record like that like that's that is so cool you know coming into this season as a rookie you don't know how you stack up against these guys and I mean fishing largemouth is one thing but coming up here up north fishing for smallmouth is something that I've really never done before you know it's a dream come true to, to win an elite series and uh, you know whenever you know hopefully it does happen and if it does happen uh, you know it's it's going to be kind of uh, the pinnacle of, of my career in bass fishing for sure hopefully one day it happens and maybe it's this week maybe it's you know another time but uh, you know i know it'll be special when it does happen <sighs> striking half shell on the drop shot 
I didn't even see that fish. I just saw a boulder on the active target too. What a special week it's been for Bryant Smith, the rookie. Sets the all-time smallmouth limit record, but you can't rest on your success, Tommy. He's fallen to eighth place, and at the top of our leaderboard is our Angler of the Year leader, Kyle Welcher, followed by two previous winners here, Chris Johnston and Taku Ito. I fished now for four years. I've never won a big a national level tournament, and obviously never won AOI or anything like that. So getting the, if the first trophy I got was AOI, that'd be, that'd be pretty crazy. That's probably the most prestigious thing in the sport because it's, you know, nine different tournaments, you know, accumulating. So it'd definitely be something to really be proud of to win something like that. It's, it just holds a lot more weight than any one tournament. I just lost that one. I was kind of curious if it was even a bass. It is definitely a bass. What's your line set up? I've got 10 pound Sunline AMZ braid tied to eight pound Sunline shooter leader. Freaking meat pie, baby. Look at that one, baby. Woo! Oh, that's a turkey pot pie right there, bro. <laughs> yes, dude, give me some, baby, yes! Gotta be five, don't it? Yeah, right at five. I think we'll turn turn our only one loose now that's smaller than three pounds. Ready to roll into the final two days of the 2023 season for the Bassmaster Elite Series. A season long race and a very important one is Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. And angler Kyle Welcher has taken over that lead, a single digit lead going into these final two days. Kyle Welcher, are you excited to get out there? I am, you know, you're always excited to be able to fish out here on St. Lawrence River in Lake Ontario. You're leading everything, big bass, you're leading the tournament and two days to go. You want to win this title bad, don't you? Yeah, you know, definitely, but you, you said it right. There's still two days to go. For me, that's the number one goal every single season. I think it's, you know, more prestigious than the classic, than anything, winning 10 tournaments, whatever. I feel like when you retire, the AOI is the thing you'll be the most proud of. Don't want him to jump. Look at that sucker, dude. Oh my gosh. How about a daggone giant? Look at that one. Not bad for somebody that struggles with smallmouth, huh? Tommy, I wasn't the best in school in science or whatever this theory is, but this seems like one of those immovable objects versus an unstoppable force. The season that Kyle Welcher and Brandon Cobb have had, they have been neck and neck all year and rightfully so, and it's going all the way down to the wire as well. Winning AOI would be, I mean, that's the pinnacle of consistency. And I've always been really, really consistent, but I've never been like top 10 consistent, I guess you'd say. I've been, you know, I've made the Forest Wood Cup at FOW, made the Classic at Bass every year. And uh, I've always been consistent, but it's like, you know, a 15th to 25th place points average. It's, it's been good. This year, just everything's went right. And to, to have string together top 10s, which is what it takes to win AOI would be phenomenal. Might be another about the same size. Got a slow head shake anyway. 
Can't really tell. Doesn't look as big, but I hadn't really seen them good either. Nah, he's not that big. About the same. A little smaller. Give us five anyway, though. Probably only a three pounder. There are some healthy fish, though. It's wild. That'll give us a limit. I think number one's still gonna be the smallest though. Yep, about a three and a half. Yep. I mean, you really still have to fish to win, even though, I mean, I am leading AOI, but I'm one point ahead, and I think I'm only like 50 ahead from 10th. So if two bad tournaments, I can still finish 20th, 30th in points. So it's so close. It's uh, really, I think it will take, to win AOI, it'll take top 20s, at least a, at least a 15th to 20th place, place average in the last two. So you have to do pretty well. Oh yeah, that's a pretty good one not like drastically bigger but he's bigger than the three and a half he might just look big because I've been catching so many three pounders I got nothing to grab hard to say I think so I think so. I mean, he's ounces, but. Really hard to weigh him when you're facing into the wind like this. Yeah, it's almost a four and a half. Brandon Cobb giving chase to Kyle Welcher in this progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year race. What a year for him. Spent so much time at the top of this race and it has been a battle for sure. Let's take a look back at 2023 on the Bassmaster Elite Series on top of this race. Oh, that might be a big one. Come here. Got you. That's the biggest one yet. Good, that's a big one. Get up in here, baby. Is that a bear one? Or that foul hooking? Come here. Oh, this is gonna be difficult. <laughs> How's that? <laughs> All right, we're gonna put him in there. That made it. There we go. Take that and... Put them in the mouth. There we go. There we go. Get in here, baby. Yes, dude. Slow start. We getting there, though. Yes, dude, give me some. Save the freaking day with that one. This one, 
This one was the only one in control of his own destiny coming into this event. Had a six point lead in progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. In a tournament that everybody talked about being safe, he was anything but safe. He is a two time Bassmaster Classic qualifier. He is your current leader in progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points from Alabama, Stone Cold Cow Welcher. Cobb finished 22nd place. He's you had six points on him. Started the day with 53 pounds and six ounces. Today, five fish needs 27 one to take the lead. 25 pounds, 15 ounces. He moves into second place in the tournament. And Stone Cold Kyle Welcher is your 2023 Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. You are a Bassmaster Angler of the Year. How does that feel? I don't think it's really set in yet. I mean, I, I really can't even believe it's true just yet, but it's like you said, we had a very slim lead coming into this. I really came into this tournament thinking that AI, AOI still had to be won. And I wasn't gonna do anything to lay up. I was gonna take the big risk. And if it, I would rather lose taking a big risk and trying to win than you know to play it safe and lose. I'd never get over it. So I took that big risk and that's definitely what saved my week this time. In 2023, the Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year belongs to Stone Cold Kyle Welcher. After having the worst season of his pro career in 2022, he turns around and doesn't miss a single cut for the nine event Elite Series, and he is your Angler of the Year champion. What a season, statistically, for Kyle Welcher. Well, Kyle Welcher, I tell you what, he had to work hard to get into this lead. The slim lead he That's had okay, coming into right this here. tournament, he knew it was not time to protect one, to play it mm. safe. He has taken maximum risk every day. Hats off to Kyle Welcher on this win. What a The Bassmaster Elite Series is sponsored by Minn Kota, Skeeter Boats, Bass Pro Shops, and by Dakota Lithium. Final day of the final tournament, ultimate tournament of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series, this Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite on the St. Lawrence River and Lake Ontario. And Patrick Walters, the man atop in a very, very tight race. How is he feeling as we get ready? Catch your back. Almost dry. It's day four. We made it. We're in contention. That's all we wanted. We wanted to make a top ten. It's my first top ten here at St. Lawrence River. Uh, we've been close last two times. You know, last year we got 11th or 12th. We got bumped out. Only about 21 pounds the third day. But uh, we did our job. We, we made the cut. We're in the top ten. We're going out in the lead. That's all you can ask for. That's my approach. I got that rigged up on five rods right now. We're just on a drop shot. The, the main thing is just getting around them. And once you get around them, that's all you need to do. We got her. We got her. We got started. Here we go. Number two. Let to catch three more and then we're going hog hunting. Number three, though. Two more fish right here. I'd like to catch two four-pounders. You know, get us to that 20-pound mark, and then we're gonna run back there to the juice. To the cold by now. <laughs> we gotta get rid of these three-pounders. Find them fours and fives. Everybody knows everybody. You kind of know how everybody fishes. It's sportsmanship. That's what bass is about. Competition, um, 
the competition between all the guys, the sportsmanship, the fellowship, that's what bass is based on. And so when you have that guys and you're friends with everybody, it, it's, it's a good friendly competition, but man, when, when we blast off, everybody's going out there to catch them. And that's the thing, yes. it's, it makes it that much better when you beat them because they give you a hard time, you know. And so it's enjoyable. Everybody's pulling for everybody. I wish everybody the best always. And that's what I love about it. You're pulling for them because you know their story. You know their background. We got all freaking day. We just got to hunker down from one at a time, just like that. That one makes me breathe a little bit better. We still got a lot of work to do, but uh, it helps up the cause finally. tremendously. <sighs> That's what we needed. I'm gonna catch a three pounders, but I was about getting tired of catching three pounders. <laughs> I've had a good week this week. I've had an amazing week. I've caught a bunch of fish, caught some really big ones. Um, today's been a little bit slower. These fish are being pretty picky for some reason. I don't really know why. They're just having commitment issues right now. And I've had some good bites, they've just nipped at it. You know, we're just trying to nickel and dime. We got 21 something pounds today. We broke the century mark um, with smallmouth. That was the main goal today. Second goal was, you know, catch a big bag and try to win this tournament. Thank you, sir. Good job, buddy. Thanks, Pops. A bang-up final day to finish a near-perfect tournament for Patrick Walters. He's in the driver's seat, but we got more, more business, Ronnie, to take care of, including Rookie of the Year. Kiyoya Fujita did his job at this final two events. Tommy, 100 pounds goes to Kiyoya. Maybe that's enough to take the win. That's what he needed to win Rookie of the Year. But we know it's the St. Lawrence River, and records are meant to be broken. Chris Johnston, the Canadian favorite, unseats Kiyoya Fujita, which means we have a rookie to crown. We're going to pause our way in here for a second, because, ladies and gentlemen, I told you guys that we had multiple awards to give away. Coming into this event, we've had eight events. Half of them have been won by rookies. Two of them have been won by this angler I'm about to bring up here. Because Koya Fujita had the opportunity today to win Rookie of the Year, but to do it, he had to win the tournament. Now that he's been officially eliminated from this tournament, we know who our rookie is. Your 2023 Dakota Lithium Bassmaster Rookie of the Year belongs to the Cowboy, Joey Cifuentes. Well, it was a close one to be sure. Going down to the final day, we love that. And Joey Cifuentes, the Arkansas rookie with two victories in his rookie season, wins the title. But we got one more piece of business to settle. Who is going to be our winner of this final one at the St. Lawrence? The Minn Kota Bassmaster Elite at the St. Lawrence River belongs to Patrick Walters. 105 pounds even, the biggest winning weight of smallmouth bass in Bassmaster history. 105 pounds even, and Patrick Walters earns his third Bassmaster Century belt, which I believe puts you in a two-way tie with Steve Kennedy for the most Century belts of an active Elite Series Pro. And you're just getting started. You're not even 30 yet, dude. We're getting there. Hey, we're just getting warmed up. Bad thing is I got to save this mustache off for the wife back at home, but we're bringing it back next year. I can promise you that. We used to call him young Patrick Walters. He's now in his fifth season with the Bassmaster Elite Series, but what a record he is compiling. A guy who really likes to run up the score when he can, and that is a good thing in this world. It's absolutely scary that now the weakness of Patrick Walters is becoming a strength. Once he'd come up north and be worried about his finishes, now he has figured out the smallmouth game, and now he's gonna be deadly in our Angler of the Year race. As you see, his five years in the Elite Series, he's gotten a 16th, a third, a fourth, a fifth, and third this year as well ending the season with a win. Also, congratulations to Kyle Welcher, our Progressive Angler of the Year. Absolutely defied the odds. A Southern angler, not good at Northern fishing. He, over the off season, really fine tuned his craft and learned all of his weaknesses and made them strengths as well. He is your Angler of the Year. And we can't forget our first winner of this episode, Kiyoya Fujita, a rookie on the Bassmaster Lead Series and one who was impressive from the start to the end. All right, well, we have enjoyed it so much. The Northern Swing of the Bassmaster Elite Series for 2020. More of that 23 season in review when we see you next time.